So, welcome back to another Humble Choice Month thingy. Um, so, it has been quite a while since there's been anything else than Dragon Ball C on the channel. Uh, that's because I have such a backlog of it, as I am have said in one of the videos, but that hasn't been uploaded yet. Anyways, we are back at Humble Choice, Humble Bundle with Humble Choice, and this month is a November. November uh, subscription thingy. So, I haven't really looked over the games since most of them are not really too much of to my interest. I think I don't know, um, but I'm definitely going to buy it for one simple reason, and that's Dark Siders Three, the first one here. So let's just get straight into it. So I played the first and the second Dark Siders. Um, both of them I really enjoyed. They're a bit, bit two different kinds of game. Well, the overall story is of course the same, but there's some a bit of some different mechanics in them, uh, where you have to gather different equipment in the second one, so you can upgrade like that. The first one is something else. Um, I have actually not seen too much of this game because I would like to play it on my own first. Um, but but basically, eight is the continuation of the story from the first two games, and now you're playing as Fury, the third horseman, I guess, and she is supposed to dispose of the seven deadly sins, which is rather <laughs> funny since I'm actually watching the seven deadly sins right now on Netflix. Whoa, crazy! Anyways, um, so so this game normally has a price of. 50 euros, I think it started around, well, $60, I guess, um, so it's already paid for itself, because I was actually con considering buying the game right as it came out, but of course I didn't, because I think it was way too much money to use on a game, and <laughs> actually the game hasn't really gotten too many good uh, reviews, so I don't know, hopefully it's a good game, and I am definitely going to play it. Either way, since I'm going to get this bundle. Um, as I said, I haven't really looked too much into the other games, but let's just take a quick uh, overview through them and see what it says together. So this is Yakuza Kiwami the second, or well two. It's an action adventure game. I've seen a lot of a lot of things about this guy. <laughs> um I think there is a few games at least, and I think they are actually actually rather popular maybe well at least some some people like them it's basically a fighting game i think story fighting game i don't know something like that um and he, he this guy thought he has had had left his clan days behind him and but he obviously has not so that's a game um i i don't know if you have to have played the first game first but uh, but um this is not the first game, I guess, since it is number two. Uh, then we have Imperator Rome Deluxe Edition. Uh, as far as I can see, uh, this is some kind of, um, what you'd call it, a, a, oh, a game like Civilization, I think. I can't remember actually the, the, the actual genre of that. It's a strategy simulation game, um, but as I said, I actually can't remember the actual genre of of this kind of game um right but as you can see character man management diverse population battle tactics military traditions different government types barbarians and rebel re rebellions and trade and provincial improvement nice so there's it seems like there's a lot of different things going on here um one thing i did notice was the map looks kind of like this, I guess. Uh, and then of course I noticed this one, which is a personal favorite of mine. Um, but yeah, it seems like it has a lot of the world in this game. Don't actually know how big it is, but, but it seems like it is rather big to be honest. I don't know why I did do that. So next one is Crying Sons. Um, and it says here, when FTL meets Foundation and Dune. Crankstones is a tactical roguelite, roguelite 
that puts you in the role of a space fleet commander as you explore a mysterious fallen empire. Um, it is a indie strategy game, and main features are space exploration, tactical fights between battleships and the squadron fleets, more than 300 possible story events, a deep and dramatic storyline structured in six chapters, a dark and disturbing atmosphere inspired by our favorite SF Universe Foundation Dune Battlestar Galactica. Yeah, um, so, so it seems like it's a found, well, it says right here, FTL meets Foundation and Dune. And the next one is Darksburg, it's an action indie game. Um, it says here it's a rogue-like, rogue-light action game. <laughs> I don't know why it keeps saying rogue-like. I mean, that is a a genre of itself, so it probably that. Uh, rogue-light action game where you must team up to, to escape the hordes of infected that have decided to settle down in the quaint little town of Darksburg. Assume the role of the heroic survivor, each with their own survivors, each with their own unique skills and personalities power them up with the numerous perks and skills you will come across throughout your runs and defeat the nefarious revenants and legion of undead that have come to plague this formerly peaceful city's key features. Massing the arts of cooperative, co cooperative gameplay, uh, choose among three random perks each time you level up. A procedurally generated adventure. Explore a number of unique zombie infested loca locals spanning across the entire town with a diverse range of objectives. So <laughs> I don't know why I couldn't read that. It's rather small text actually, since my screen are a lot bigger than I am used to. Okay, so that's Darksburg. It, it seems interesting though, the team up part might not be so easy. Next one is Little Miss Fortune. It's an indie adventure game. Little Miss Fortune is an interactive story focused on exploration and characters, both sweet and dark, where your choices have consequences. Starting with Fortune Ramiz uh, Hernandez, an imaginative eight-year-old who seeks the price of eternal happiness as a gift to her mommy. Led by her new friend, Mr. Voice, they adventure into the woods where mysterious mysteries are unraveled and a little bit of bad luck unfolds. Features. You may pet a dog. Thank you. A fishy, a wolfy, the kraken, the kitty, and the foxy. Visit a pet cemetery with a shovel. Now with the real human voices, he and misfortune say some pretty cute things. Missing children, there's a monster. Fall in love, commit pretty kind, petty crimes. Original art by Natalia Martinson, I guess. Original soundtrack by Isaac Martinson. I guess they kind of know each other, maybe. Um, so it is a indie adventure exploration game, I guess. Maybe while you are eight year old, um, Remis Hernandez. I don't actually know how to pronounce it, I don't really speak. Um, well, I don't really want to say which country it's from because some, <laughs> some countries have kind of the same names, so it could be. Spanish, I guess, or Brazilian or Portuguese or something. I don't know. Now I said too much. Anyways, uh, it has some kind of nice artwork. It looks really cool. It's it's a, a it lean. It seems like it's some kind of a simple, simpler game, I guess. But it has a eighty-seven percent rating on Steam. The next one is Smile for me. Smile for me is an unconventional point and click adventure game that puts you and puts you at the center of the abstract world, not and shake your head to chat with friends and solve the mysteries to cheer them up. The people are bizarre, the puzzles are whack, and the world hides a sinister secret. As you can see on those two here, that's the um, uh, the uh, not all the shake of your head. 
get out of here, Merlin. Um, so yeah. There's a lot of features, it seems here. Explore a beautiful world. Solve a mouth full of tricky puzzles. Chat with 23 peculiar characters. But that's not all. There are charming animations, secret backstories, too much gossip. There is even more. Emotional baggage, alarming puppetry, a condescending narrator. Keep it going. Depressed clowns, fear of mortality. The true meaning of friendship, where am I? So, yes, that seems kind of interesting, and yeah, right. It's it's it <laughs> looks like it's not the most typical game here, but but it seems rather interesting, and it seems to be well. Um, different. Let's just leave it at that. The next one is Dark Wood, which is an action adventure, um, horror survival horror game, and it seems like it seems like it's a top-down game, right? I'm pretty sure it's a top-down game. Um, oh, these are loading scenes or something, or some kind of items you find. Uh, scavenge and explore the rich, ever-changing free roam world by day. Then hunker down in your hideout and pray for the morning light. Survival horror from a top-down perspective that is terrifying. That is terrifying to play. No handheld or quest markers. Test your skills and figure things out on your own. By day, explore the randomly generated, ever sin sinister woods, scavenge for material materials, craft weapons, and discover new secrets. By night, find shelter, barricade, set up traps, and hide, or defend yourself from the horrors that lurk in the dark. Gain skills and perk by uh, extracting a strange essence from the mutated fauna and flora, and eject it into your blood stray okay that's a weird thing to do watch out for unexpected consequences make decisions that impact the world of darkwood its inhabitants and the story you experience meet every every characters learn the stories and decide the fate and remember don't trust anyone as night go by the lines between reality and nightmarish fantasies begin to blur are you ready to step into darkwood the next one is and it says you pronounce choik <laughs> is a dark but playful point and click adventure hand animated in meticulous frame by frame 2d escape the clutches of evil wizard wizard and discover the secrets hidden within the spellbound castle of your ancestors. Uh, so it's a it's a point and click adventure, and my cat <laughs> is outside the door. Oh, let's! I'm I'm just gonna open for him. Hello. <laughs> Can you hear him? Oh, oh okay. <laughs> Tried to make sure you could hear him, but he then decided to punch the, <laughs> the microphone or the pop filter, I guess. Um, he is very sweet, but don't go onto the keyboard, please. He's now on the floor. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a point and click game. Didn't I say point click? Yeah, point and click adventure. Um, but it is hand animated. What? I have a problem, brother. He, he wants to do stuff. He does. He's not allowed to. Anyways, um, it, it's the animation or the artwork here is actually pretty darn beautiful. And I like it very much. That's a super. Okay, I didn't mean to do that. The next one is Rover Mechanic Simulation. Simulator, I guess. So if you have ever wanted to be a Rover Mechanics, uh, Mechanic, I guess, 
now is your chance to do it. I, I guess it's it's rather self-explanatory, right? Um, it is a game. I just got my cat over to me. Um, he's on the second chair I have in, in the office now. Um, so I think it's rather self-explanatory. You are a rover mechanic. The, um, there are a lot of different things here. And it seems rather interesting if if you're into into simulation games, right? So restore the legendary rovers. Rovers. So I guess you can 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 work on the actual rovers used in different um, different missions. Nice. That's kind of cool. Next game is your rope. Uh, I think your your Europa, maybe. Waking up trapped in a tree with no recollection of anything, you must explore a strange fragmented city floating in the sky to learn who you are and where you fit into the world. A gravity defying gameplay, walk upside down on walls. In fact, walk anywhere you can get to. Mind bending puzzles. Evolve and explore. Create. Your own game. Build in level, map, and character edi editor lets you build an entirely new game using simple tools you'll be creating in minutes. Okay, that's nice. I, I do like, not that I really all, that often use them, but I do like when games allow you to make levels for yourself in game. That is cool, it, it, but it seems like it's just some kind of. Um, just some kind of exploration game, adventure, uh, action adventure indie puzzle, puzzle adventure game, I guess. If you jump down in that box, you will never be able to get out, cat. And he did it. Oh my god, <laughs> you're so stupid, cat. And I'm back. I, I placed him outside, but didn't close the door all the way. So now he's just laying there. Anyways, uh, next game, the last game. Tom's Men and Kingdom Rebuild. Hello. You just have to push the door to get in. Don't try to close it even more. <laughs> Anyways, um... It is a strategy simulation. Welcome behind. Oh no, I don't want to read stuff like that. I want to read the features. City building gameplay set in the me medieval times. Complex economic sim and deep production chains. 150 different towns and production buildings. Town and production building. Seasons and weather effects that influence gameplay. Citizens have their own daily routines with different demands. The over Arching town level brings you player progression for every single deed. You will be a better s something each time you play the game. Devastating disasters like fire, the plague, drought, and stop that, <laughs> and many more. 26 different diverse scenarios and challenging tasks. Unrestricted endless mode on 24 maps. Optionally, optional. Military features with soldiers and bandits. New towny language. For live liar interaction. Li livelier. Li <laughs> I don't know why I couldn't read that. Livelier interactions. So it is. I think it's just a, not a normal. But but you know a, a kind of standard uh, town building game. Uh, time town building simulation simu simulator sim game. Um, like so many others before, but with a different kind of different artwork, not exactly the same. But but I uh, not to say anything bad about this game, but there is like a million uh, town sim games. So, but but some of them are actually pretty good. So uh, it's not a bad thing. It's just effect. But that is the last one. So um, let's just end it here because my cat really wants my attention. Really, really, 
really wants my attention. Yep, thank you. Uh, he just jumped up to me. Um, but that is going to be it for this video. It's um, it's a long one, actually. I didn't mean to, for it to be this long, but my cat kind of got in the way and, and I actually decided to read a lot more than I had expected. So, um, as I always say, this has not been a review. It's only an overview. And since I didn't actually prepare too much on, on beforehand, that is not really how it's going to be. So I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.